Well, it's great to be here uh, from Atlanta by way of LA, uh, which took me 12 hours to get from there to here yesterday. Um, so a little jet lag, so I apologize ahead of time. Um, but what I was gonna talk about briefly is some of the work that uh, I've been lucky to take part in at the Atlanta VA uh, with a focus obviously on uh, smartphone. And I think really a better descriptor is more technology enabled rehab, because I think one thing we're learning so far is that the smartphone itself sort of is just one tool in a larger sort of repertoire of technologies that we can use in, that we can use to our advantage. Uh, these are some of my uh, organizational affiliations, some of my relevant financial disclosures to this talk, and then this is the requisite uh, federal disclosure statement slide that I am forced to present to you, and I'll give you all a minute to read over, but um, it is what it is. So now that I've made really good use of my first 45 seconds, uh, we can get to the topic of the talk, uh, which is cardiac rehab. So I, don't th I think this slide is kind of superfluous. I don't have to um, explain the benefits of uh, CR to this crowd, uh, but obviously there's a wealth of data that supports uh, CR for prevention, secondary prevention and CVD. But what I do want to talk about, sort of what Mary already alluded to, is this sort of very low level of enrollment we have nationwide for people who are eligible, roughly about 20%, and then beyond that, uh, less than 5% that actually complete a full three-month program. Uh, and our at-risk population is actually fair even worse. Uh, and where I really want to focus on is among the veteran population. Uh, and so this is, again, uh, the, the, the same uh, um, study that Mary uh, Woolley and David Schaffer, uh that Mary already mentioned, but um, looking at referrals nationwide over a 12-month period, over a five-year period for um, the number of veterans who are eligible, who actually completed one CR session 12 months after their event, uh, is about 8.4%, is about 8.4%, roughly half of what we see in the non-veteran population, uh, and really no major differences between uh, men, women, and then whites and non-whites. Uh, and then in Atlanta, we saw that our numbers were roughly similar. So uh, we did an in-house review uh, over six months of referrals, uh, roughly about 100, and of those 100, all we could find evidence for, uh, for, for the number of veterans that did one rehab session was uh, eight. Uh, and then of those eight, we could not find any evidence that any of them actually finished a full three-month program. In Atlanta, we don't have, we're not one of the, the, the centers that has its own on-site CR program. There's about 35 in the country that have one. We're not one of them. And so we really rely on uh, the CHOICE program, which I'll get to in a second. Um, but these numbers are sort of, despite having a very large uh, eligible population, uh, and this is numbers from 2014, but we have roughly 1,000 plus patients a year that are admitted to the hospital uh, for a diagnosis related to CAD, whether it's for an MI uh, or just for worsening unstable angina. Uh, and taking into account a readmission rate of about 20%, that costs us about $3 million a year in just readmission costs, not even the direct upfront cost uh, related to the admission itself. Uh, and so w some of our barriers really are, so one is that we don't have an on-site program. Uh, and then Georgia uh, is one of the uh, more rapidly growing sites with a very large number of rural veterans. So we have about just under a million veterans in our sort of care area, uh, and the majority of them live over an hour away from our hospital. Um, and you think that wouldn't matter if we were sort of relying on third-party rehab centers where we can sort of, you know, say, well, go to a rehab site, you know, nearby where you live. Um, but it actually might matter uh, because uh, this is another study uh, from Mary Woolley's group that came out just a few months ago. Uh, and uh, it's a very small sample of, uh, of interviews from about 50 veterans across 30 VA medical centers. But uh, what they found were a couple of themes in terms of barriers to veteran adoption of CR uh, and some facilitators. And so of the top three barriers, sort of what you saw were two out of the three were primarily just structural. Either you know, they have a hard time getting to a rehab center, be it close to their house or at the VA medical center. Because uh, keep in mind, even if they're going to a rehab center close by their house, they still have to get to the rehab center, which is a problem for a lot of the veterans. Um, and, you know, a lot of them actually uh, would have preferred to go to a rehab center tied to the VA as, as opposed to going to a rehab center that's, you know, tied to the community. Uh, and then of the most common facilitators, what they, what they saw was that, um, you know, one of the biggest things that sort of drove veterans to do more rehab uh, was having some sort of dedicated champion to help sort of shepherd them through the process. And so, again, I don't think I have to go over this again. Mary just kind of pointed this out, but there's a wealth of evidence for home-based CR, and this is, again, uh, the Cochrane re uh, Review from 2015. But what I do want to talk about sort of is one thing that we kind of focused on, which was this idea of using smartphones to, uh, or technology to deliver rehab uh, in the home. Just grab a quick drink of water, so bear with me. I actually have to pour it. So, cheers. 
Um, but the hypothesis here, um, and well, we heard a talk this morning uh, by Mary, who I think is in the audience, uh, of uh, using, using smartphones is, you know, can you really actually amplify the benefits of home-based CR using digital technology? Uh, and at the same time, can you use that to minimize barriers? Uh, and with the goal of that being to, or, or, or primarily through uh, a better case management system uh, for delivering home-based CR, uh, as well as, you know, having, you know, the goal of the app itself would be, you know, you would want to have a virtual sort of patient assistant, uh, almost like a Jarvis that would sort of help the patients kind of go through this process uh, remotely in the home, you know, by, with, with having some kind of daily sort of reminder assistant and like positive feedback system. Uh, and the goals are very simple. You know, we, we want to increase access. Uh, we really want to use technology to maintain the quality and safety of rehab, as well as you know, finding ways of cost control, be it on the delivery side, uh, as well as on the outcome side, cost savings from having less events, less readmissions. Uh, just a, a random sample of studies uh, looking at smartphone-enabled CR. Mary alluded to a few of these, or one, uh, or at least one of these. Uh, but I'll just say that you know, there's a wealth of data now that shows that you know, home-based CR isn't just feasible, uh, but it's also safe and, you know, most cases, at least equally effective to home-based CR. So this is our pilot program in Atlanta. We're about six months through, uh, and the goal here is just feasibility. We're looking to enroll uh, 50 participants, 50 veterans, uh, for a full three-week home-based CR program uh, that requires just two in-person visits. One, to get them enrolled in the platform, to um, do the risk stratification. We have all of our veterans do uh, uh, to, to walk on a treadmill or do a six-minute walk if they prefer. Uh, we do a bunch of surveys. We get some basic vitals. We onboard them, uh, and they go home for the full three weeks where uh, our rehab manager calls them at least once every week or two to check in and see how they're progressing through their goals. Um, we get a wealth of data back from the app that I'll show you in a minute, back into the dashboard that lets us keep sort of real-time track on how the patients are progressing almost day-to-day -day through the program. And these are the measures that we're looking at. Again, it's primarily focused on uh, feasibility, so enrollment, engagement, completion. Uh, some secondary outcome measures we're looking at are uh, 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 matrix of functional capacity, uh, some risk factors, uh, and then the biopsychosocial uh, factors as well, and then at a very tertiary level, uh, looking for sort of long-term, or at least three, six, and nine-month nine uh, readmissions. And so, a couple of screenshots of the platform, uh, courtesy Moving Analytics. So this is, to your left, is the, the online dashboard, which has really sort of become the, the, the main, um, or I don't want to say the main, but really, uh, you would think that the, the smartphone or the app would be the cool part and, and the really sort of valuable part, which it is, but the dashboard itself has become really valuable in the sense that this is the way that we really actually interact with the patients sort of day to day, and, and, and this has really sort of uh, been what's let Michelle, our rehab coordinator, sort of maximize her time when it comes to delivering the home-based rehab program, and the app itself has been, equally, uh, has been equally as beneficial, and this is a screenshot looking at just the, um, the daily task list for the patient. Um, but it lets them sort of check in, see what their daily tasks are, record their exercise, manage their blood pressure, uh, document their medications, and so on. Uh, a couple more screenshots from the app. And then, so these are just some basic uh, preliminary outcomes that we've been able to track from the, the platform. So we're about at 22 patients. The retention is about 80%, uh, who on average are exercising about 180 minutes a week, uh, who are meeting their, uh, our rehab program is heart rate target based. Uh, and so, uh, on average, the veterans are achieving their, their, their target heart rate uh, by 3.7 times. Uh, and uh, th there's a whole slew of educational modules as well. Uh, and so they're looking at about six of them. And, and, and really, uh, one of the cool things as well is the, the platform has sort of this two-way communication back with the nurse. And so we're seeing about nine messages kind of going back and forth uh, between the veterans as well as uh, the rehab coordinator. And this is a quote from Michelle, who's been very gratified to help our veterans play an active role in their own health care and recovery, uh, while also increasing access to cardiac rehab. And then just some basic take-home points. So, you know, I think home-based CR, as we've seen, is, is safe, it's feasible, it's effective. Uh, Smartphone-enabled CR may be feasible in a, in a more scalable way of delivering CR uh, to a larger uh, population. And then uh, using digital technology may allow us to amplify some of those home-based benefits while also increasing access and reducing costs. Whew. All right. Thank you very much.